Hello everyone, this is Rafia Walter and today we're going to be looking at uh, how to create a machine learning scenario and publish an API with SCP Data and Intelligence Launchpad. So the objective of this machine learning scenario is going to uh, calculate whether or not uh, employees are going to leave our company. So here I have a CSV file with uh, employees uh, a lot of information about them and whether or not they left the company or not. Okay. So, uh, first of all, what we need to do is we need to uh, load the data. So, uh, I'm using a simulation of, um, of an Amazon S3 uh, bucket and I've loaded this, uh, this CSV file here. And uh, and once we've done that, uh, I'm going to uh, create the connection to this uh, mini I/O browser, which simulates uh, Amazon S3 bucket. So first, we're going to go into the connection management, and uh, here, as you can see, the S3 bucket has been defined. So if I went and edit this. This is all the information, the bucket, and uh, I'll be able to connect to my to my machine here. Uh, just so you know, I've also uh, configured uh, a HANA uh, database because um, I've actually loaded the data also in this HANA database. And uh, this also, I'll be using this connection uh, throughout the machine learning scenario. So once this is done, uh, we'll dive into the machine learning scenario manager. So first of all, let's create the attrition uh, demo scenario. And uh, here we have uh, the data set, the notebook, the pipeline, the execution, and the model. So the idea is we're going to create uh, a pipeline that will produce the model and then uh, we'll train this model and then uh, we'll expose this uh, model through an API. So uh, just to explain, uh, I've already done this so I won't be redoing the notebook here but uh, if I went into the notebook, as you know there is a JupyterLab notebook available inside of uh, SAP Data Intelligence and this is, uh, this is actually the what we're doing is uh, first I need to load uh, a few uh, uh, mandatory libraries. As we'll see, uh, this is a step that we'll need to be doing inside of um, the, the Docker file of a Python, of our data pipeline. Then I'm going to be loading and importing a few of um, scikit-learn, learn, uh, pandas, uh, notebook HANA connector, because as I said, uh, this was for the notebook uh, creation. So here I'm using the connection that I've shown you a few seconds ago. And basically I'm just loading the employee survey information here and put it into a Pandas data frame. Then what I like to do is simply to look at the data using uh, uh, exploratory data analysis. And uh, just to give me a rough idea of what data is missing, what is the average age, of uh, in my data set, so everybody basically is around 36 uh, days since last review, months since last review, salary, etc., etc. None. And then uh, the idea here so, this is the code that I'll be using in my machine learning, my Python machine learning uh, wrapper. But uh, so, as you saw, I'm loading, I've used the uh, the HANA database connection. So basically this is going to be the only difference between this JupyterLab notebook and the Python uh, machine learning wrapper that I'll use inside of my data pipeline. So here basically I'm, so for those of you who don't know anything about data science, I need to put into labels a few information because they're not, they're not figures. So basically for the gender or whether people are male or female, the job types, or the birth country, I'm using this label encoder so that 
instead of saying male or female, I'm putting zero or ones. The job types also is going to be zero, one, two, three instead of manager, engineer. The same for birth country. This is a good way to transform our categorical features into numerical features. And then I need to balance my bad asset because I have a lot of people that have not left the company and only a few people who left the company. So this is a good way. Also a good rule of thumb when you're doing data science is to normalize your data because maybe salaries will have a big impact because they're huge numbers, but the age is a small number. So it's a good thing to always normalize your data. Uh, so I'm using a balanced data set of 200 people who left and 200 people who didn't leave. And then I normalize my data. And then I'm applying this pre-processing. And uh, basically, that's all I need to do. And I need to determine if people are going to stay in the company or people are not going to stay in the company. And for that, I'm, very, I'm using a very basic... Uh, uh, algorithm which is a logistic regression and then uh, I'm training my model and once this model is created I want to look at how well it predicted and for that I'm using a few metrics which is the mean absolute error the mean square error and the roots mean square error so if we were to run this now we get a few results that I can show here which is uh, the result of my machine learning so basically this is what I'm going to be doing uh, in the next few minutes. So, once we are inside of the machine uh, learning scenario manager, what we need to do is first we're going to create a pipeline, and this pipeline is going to be the training model pipeline. So for this, which is really nice, is uh, data intelligence offers you uh, a few templates. Uh, what we are going to be doing is we need to use the Python producer. So I'll create this pipeline. So here we see uh, we've created uh, this automatically, uh, this template. So all I need to do is configure it. So I'll go into the, the read file. So we're actually using the service. It's going to be S3. And I'm going to use my configuration type. I'm going to use a configuration manager, get the connection ID that I've shown you earlier. Basically now the only thing I need to do is to give the path of, uh, of my file. For that, if we go back here, this is simply the path is the bucket. The bucket was put in the connection and we can basically just put here the path of the CSV file. So that's all there is to it. Then we have the Python code. So Basically, this is a very basic code, which is not doing anything. So I'm going to go and retrieve all my the code that I've already written. And as you can see, this is the part that I've shown you in the machine learning uh, notebook. Uh, I'm going to be using a few of those libraries, and I'll show you how to define this in a few minutes. But uh, this is basically all the code and also I've added the metrics to show me in the result of uh, my model creation. And this is also when how to export the model. We're going to be using Pickle. And, uh, and this is all we need to do. So basically, I'm going to here, copy paste uh, this code, replace this code here. OK. And that's it. So now. As you can see, we're going to need to use a feature. Uh, we need to define a Docker file. So what you need to do is, uh, if you go here into a tradition, attrition, sorry, you're going to create inside of Docker files. You're going to be here, and you're going to create a Docker file. And this Docker file will be uh, where you define all the different libraries that you're going to be using. So this is uh, what you're going to be doing. You're going to copy this from .com sap. Uh, sorry, openSUSE.python36 and then run the different Python pip install commands to, in this case, install numpy pandas for the data frames and scikit-learn 
for the actual um, sorry for the actual uh, usage of these libraries. And what's really important is then you go into the configuration and use those tags. So open source Python 36 tornado 502 and then of course a tag this is the tag that I'll be using to, s to tell uh, data intelligence that I want to be using this um, specific docker file and then to be able to use all those uh, libraries so that's what I'm going to be doing here so what you go what you do is you go into Python 3 and basically uh, you're going to add a group and for this group you're basically just going to go here and say that you want to be using Python attrition okay and no version well I forgot to say something is it in the docker file once you've finished creating this and you've finished putting in the tags what you need to do is you need to save and then build your uh, docker file and that's all there to it and that's once you've done that you'll be able to get this p attrition uh, from the uh, from the tags uh, drop down list okay and basically that's all there is to it there is nothing much more that you need to do so now uh, what we'll do is uh, we're gonna save this model and we're gonna go back okay so once we're in the pipelines here I'll select my training model and uh, just execute this training model so no configuration description no so I'll just call this CLF uh, attrition model mm, video okay and then we'll save this so the execution has been scheduled and uh, the model is running in the background so I'll pause for a few seconds and come back when this is finished so now the model has run if we go into the pipelines we see uh, we have a model available here and an execution so the execution went through uh, if we look into the metrics uh, we see the results uh, of our mean squared error with mean squared error uh, so basically uh, this is the results we see that this time it ran on the full data set of our 2800 people and we have a technical identifier for the model and the data set okay so this is going to be quite useful actually we're going to be needing this so i'm just going to copy this to the, to the clipboard so now that i've created the model what we need to do is basically just provide an api for new uh, new employees or existing employees so basically this is going to be the API attrition demo and this time I'm going to be using the Python consumer and I'm just going to create this so now what we need to verify is the uh, name of the content artifact model here So I'll be using uh, here, replace this. And uh, once this is done, so basically we have our Python uh, script here. And uh, this script also needs to be modified. So I'll get, get the corresponding script here. So basically what we're doing is uh, we're retrieving retrieving this code here and simply replacing the code here so what are we doing here is basically we're getting back the model that was uh, defined previously in the Python producer and uh, here uh, I'm gonna apply the, um, the code here uh, on the on the data that is received okay so basically we're reapplying exactly the same thing that was done in the model, but only this time uh, 
I'm going to use predict probability. And uh, of course, if there is a problem, we're going to log the message. But if not, I want to get the employee attrition back from this. So once this is done, we also need to group and use the Docker file that we've defined before, because we're going to be using the same uh, libraries. So P attrition. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Basically, that's the only thing we need to do. So I'm going to save this. And uh, what we're going to go is go back here. So I have the training model. The training model was executed. I'll retrieve uh, the identifier of this uh, model. And uh, we're going to go into the API creation. And we're going to deploy this. So Now I'm going to use the model technical name that I've copied. Save this. So this has been deployed. So right now the status is pending. For now, I'll just go here and copy paste this um, URL. Going back here. Wait a little. So now we see that this is running. Uh, the deployment was finished and it's running. So. What we'll do is we'll just copy this uh, URL and uh, using, for example, SOAP UI5, we'll post uh, this. We just need to add the uh, slash v1 slash upload JSON using the post method and uh, with a basic authentication with your username and password. The headers need to be hx dash requested dash width and then XML HTTP request. And you just send in a JSON file, like a request, and we run this. And uh, we see the result, which gives us uh, the employee attrition uh, for this JSON, which is a 23% chance that the employee will stay, and a 77% chance that our employee uh, might leave the company. So um, this is basically what I wanted to show you. Uh, just to sum up, so uh, we first created the connection to our S3 bucket here. We uploaded this file. Then uh, during this connection, we then uh, went into the machine learning uh, scenarios. Uh, we created uh, two different pipelines, uh, which one, which was the training model, another one with the API uh, attrition demo. So th in the training model, we used a specific Python code that we developed using the notebooks. We trained the model, executed it, and looked at the metrics to see it was performing well. And then what we did is uh, we used uh, this uh, this uh, model to deploy a Python consumer from a Python consumer a template, we created another pipeline. And we did this uh, Python attrition demo. Uh, we deployed it. Once it's been executed, we were able to uh, uh, ask to this point using a post method, using a slash v1 slash upload JSON, uploading a JSON with the specific headers and authentication and get a result from our model and our API. Thank you very much.